Hey, what's up everybody? So the country that I chose was India. And so I'll go into a brief history of anthropology in the area. <clears throat> it started out, it was introduced as an early colonial concern in the 19th century, and it served as an aid to the administration by the British colonial power. A guy named Francis Buchanan was appointed by the Governor General and Council to collect information on the conditions of inhabitants of Bengal and also kind of give some insight into their religious practices. Other early anthropologists wrote books and monographs on additional on individual, I'm sorry, individual tribes, castes, and village communities. Anthropological teaching first occurred at Calcutta University in the region in 1920. But problems began to occur due to anthropology's use in colonial matters like deforestation and other issues that restricted tribal use of some forested areas. People started kind of becoming more aware of what anthropology was being used for, so it kind of started becoming, you know, associated negatively in people's minds. But one early example of applied work was anthropologists exposed the true nature of the Bengal famine in the early 1940s and found that those affected were not professional beggars, but landless laborers, fishermen, and artisans hit by famine and the denial policy of the British. So because of that, the Indian government was forced to administer corrective changes. After the British left and India gained its independence, more universities in the area started training people in anthropology. Uh, there started to become a pretty big overlap of fields like sociology and anthropology, they came pretty intertwined. Um, a guy named Bose suggested that theoretical anthropology should be utilized in the application of applied anthropology, so just pretty much suggesting that you can't really have one without the other. After 1950, applied anthropologists contributed to the economic and overall development of India, and this was through policy formulation implementation and evaluation, and it occurred in many different fields uh, like health, environment, and education, labor, exploitation, and many, many others. The list just keeps going on and on. To kind of make some links between how academic and applied anthropology were kind of utilized together, uh, steps were taken for people like anthropologists to become an advocate for an issue rather than just presenting non-biased facts to research. And they did so, they made links on issues like tribal issues and human rights issues. There are at least 12 tribal research and training institutions within India. The Anthropological Survey of India is the largest and employs the most anthropologists, psychologists, linguists, and museum specialists. So anthropologists work for uh, universities, and agencies such as this one, like the Anthropological Survey of India. But they also work for tribal groups and other NGOs, uh, just depending on the social issue. I mean, they're pretty versatile in the area. So they're, you know, they're doing some pretty good work over there, it seems like. Uh, these days, um, you know, not a lot is done on globalization as far as research goes over there in India, so it's not studied enough. But some of the issues that are arising over there because of globalization, um, of course, there's a, an increase in advertisement, criminality, particularly within urban areas, and poverty, which they kind of go hand in hand. And, I mean, as you could guess, there's a higher consumption of non-essential items, and there's also a you know, a, a growth in agribusiness, which could potentially be good, but has a lot of problems too, where a lot of people are allotting their lands that they have to be used by big, you know, outside groups or agencies that want to come in and kind of take over their land and stuff. So anyway, um, this kind of gives you a, a brief background of anthropology in India and then kind of when it made the, I wouldn't necessarily call it so much of a split, it's kind of a conjunction between the two, between theoretical anthropology and applied anthropology. 
uh, particularly you know around the 1950s or after World War II, and after uh, Britain left the area and India gained its independence. So anyway, um, I'm going to cut this video now, but hopefully this kind of gave you some insight into what I read about. And just as a side note, I'm recording this on my smartphone. So now that I have one, I can actually do things like this. So it actually came in handy. So as much as I resisted the urge to get a phone, it actually worked out to my advantage. Anyway, um, I'll cut this now and I will see what comes of this.